Hello and welcome to OPM Now, where we look at the activities of the Prime Minister and your government. I'm Naomi Francis. This week on OPM Now, Coding Academy launched. Government sees improved efficiency and cost reduction following merger of Heart NSTA Trust. And NIDS commences town hall meetings. These and more stories coming up right now. Prime Minister Andrew Holness officially launched Jamaica's first coding academy last week during a virtual event. In the first instance, 100 Jamaican youngsters will be trained at the academy, which is a partnership between the Amber Group and the Heart NSTA Trust. The trainees will be guaranteed jobs to become the next generation of coders in the region. Prime Minister Holness said the opening of the academy signals a groundbreaking first step for Jamaica to become an innovation and technology hub. We are going to train our Jamaicans to be able to do this kind of programming. Now, if you stop just for a moment to think of this, the services that you could provide as a result of this, incredible. The benefit, exponential. A totally new industry providing new opportunities for young Jamaicans. Meanwhile, last week in Parliament, Prime Minister Holness said the government has seen improved efficiency and cost reductions following the merger of the Heart Trust, the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, the National Youth Service and the Apprenticeship Board into the new Heart NSDA Trust. The, the Trust has also been very innovative. Just last week or a few weeks ago, we launched the mobile training facility where the Heart Trust has acquired um, two mobile units where they are going to rural areas and bringing certification to the people. The first two in a series of virtual town halls was held last week to get public input into the new national identification system. The town halls, which is an extension of the Joint Select Committee of Parliament examining the bill, saw legislators and the technical team responding to concerns, questions and feedback from members of the public. January, February, March are basically months in which we hope that all Jamaica will be given the opportunity to participate, engage the Joint Select Committee, engage the technical team, look at the bill, so that when we debate it in Parliament, hopefully in April or May, then everyone will be aware of the contents of the bill, and if any changes are to be made or recommended that they can be considered. Members of the public are also being encouraged to submit written comments to the Joint Select Committee of Parliament by Friday, January 29. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has condemned once again the heinous crimes or acts of violence and its impact on children. The Prime Minister's comments came in light of the killing of four-year-old Chloe Brown in what was a domestic dispute in her family and the serious injury in a separate incident to two-year-old Akira Carr. Little Akira has been hospitalized after a family dispute in Malcolm Heights, Hanover. The government is putting in place measures to respond to travel measures that will come into effect following the announcement of the United States government that persons entering that country must show a valid approved COVID-19 test. As of January 26, almost everyone traveling from any country in the world to the United States of America must present a negative COVID-19 viral test done no more than 72 hours before your flight's departure time. This includes almost every U.S. citizen, resident, and foreigners like us, Jamaicans. This development comes as no surprise given the growing global trend of increasing testing requirements before travel and generally as a means of curbing the spread of COVID-19. Our Minister of Tourism, Edmund Bartlett, named a special task force to spearhead efforts to boost Jamaica's COVID-19 testing capacity in light of the growing demand for such tests fueled by new travel requirements in key tourism source markets. Jamaica is prepared. Despite some challenges, the tourism and health ministries, their respective agencies, coupled with strong leadership and support from the private sector organization of Jamaica, the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, 
Private laboratories and medical professionals have been working around the clock to ensure that sufficient supplies and access to viral tests are easily available. And finally, the Prime Minister says the government is working hard to establish an ownership economy and one of the first steps is eradicating squatting across the country. One of the reasons why we have created the, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Renewal is to start to create the policy framework by which we can put an end to squatting, an end to improper, illegal, and informal settlement, and to create order and fairness and equity and access in settlement. It is going to take a generation to change this, but we have to start somewhere. And that's it for a jam-packed OPM Now this week. Please remember to follow the Prime Minister on all socials at Andrew Holness JM and on YouTube at Andrew Michael Holness forward slash JM. And look out for OPM Now every Monday at 6 p.m. on all socials. Catch you next week. Stay safe.